Outside the ivory towers of universities, Americans faced a rising chorus of voices that also threatened to reshape traditional values. 8.8 million immigrants crowded into American cities in the first decade of the 20th century alone. There was a lot of tension in the air, but the flashpoint uh, turned on sexuality and particularly prostitution. Mainstream Protestant America thought it was a phenomenon that was caused by those wicked foreigners in those cesspools of cities into which our young girls are now going. In 1907, the crusading McClure's Magazine published a story about an association of Russian Jews purportedly supplying Chicago brothels with new personnel. When a city prosecutor claimed that those prostitutes were, in effect, white slaves, a wave of hysteria gripped the country. There was all sorts of lurid stories. Women were, were being hit by poison darts on the trolleys. They were being lured away from imagined ice cream parlors. It created a tremendous hullabaloo because people believed this. Although scant evidence supported the existence of white slavery, Congress passed the White Slave Traffic Act on June 25, 1910. This law, also known as the Mann Act, forbade any person from transporting women or girls across state lines for the purpose of prostitution, debauchery, or any other immoral purpose. One of the interesting things uh, of the Mann Act is uh, it didn't depend upon actual sex happening. It was very almost Orwellian in the way it was construed by the courts. The vital elements of the crime were transportation across the state line. The Mann Act soon became a tool for more personal vendettas. Fathers turned in the boyfriends of wanton daughters. Wives reported philandering husbands and some prosecutors exploited the law as a weapon against romances that crossed the color line. Jack Johnson was an easy target for the Mann Act. In 1908, he became the first black man to break through boxing's color barrier and reigned as heavyweight champion of the world. Perhaps he was the Muhammad Ali of his day. He was very flamboyant, uh, he was pretty much in-your-face kind of person. A black man being champion of the world didn't fit into a lot of people's idea about who that should be. Johnson further inflamed his critics by openly keeping company with white women and eventually marrying two of them. Sex and race have always been linked in American culture and American society ever since the days of slavery. Black males were looked at as inherently predatory. You know, white men essentially projected all of their own anxieties onto black men and looked at them as sexual, you know, beasts. In the fall of 1912, federal authorities arrested and convicted Johnson for transporting one of his lady friends from Pittsburgh to Chicago. Few doubted that race was the real motivation. The federal prosecutor immediately after the conviction expressed before the press the hope that this would be an example about the evils of permitting Negroes and whites to marry. It had nothing to do with the crime at all. It was an amazingly candid expression of why he'd been targeted. Jack Johnson ultimately served one year in prison as punishment for his so-called crime. For the next two decades, Mann Act convictions continued to rise, but the manner in which men and women lived and loved in America was already changing.